Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. Today we are at part three of the production of single malt whiskey once and today. Today we are at the, uh, yeah, the maturation of whiskey in casks and in part one and two I talked about the production of the malt of brewing and distillation and today we reached the maturation in the whiskey casks. Whiskey is filled into oak casks and then put into warehouses to rest and to mature means interchange with the oak of the cask, interchange aromas. The warehouses in former times, one or two centuries ago, were stone warehouses, quite narrow. They are called dunnage warehouses and whiskey is stored there uh, in three casks on top of each other. You have a bottom row then two uh, uh, wooden cantilevers on top of it, uh, then you roll the second row of casks on top of that and then again uh, uh, lumber, lumber on top of it and then casks on the third floor or the third row uh, all in one floor and that's it. So there are only three cars on top of each other and the capacity of these warehouses are quite small. The bottom, the soil of the warehouses is tamped, tamped floor. So there is a higher humidity in these warehouses, but the warehouses have also open windows that the outside air can go through and help in the maturation process. So the Damp floor has an influence with a higher humidity in the atmosphere in the Danish warehouse, but not too high because there's air going through the warehouses as well. It was hard labor to staple the cask on top of each other. A cask, a filled cask, several hundred kilos. So hard labor to put those casks on top of each other. Um, the old warehouses are still in use and my feeling is that half of the warehouses are still old Dunwich warehouses, but the amount of casks maturing in Dunwich warehouses is only a fraction of the complete ca uh, number of casks maturing in, Sh in Scotland. Uh, there is a place called Blackrange Bond from Diageo. There are warehouses several stories high, the size of a soccer field and I felt that there were 200 warehouses in that place, but it's only felt there was less, for sure it was less. Um, until the end of the, the big recession in the United Kingdom, in, in Great Britain, it was in the middle of the 1980s, uh, when Margaret Thatcher uh, rejuvenated the industry or the uh, economy of Great Britain. Uh, then when the economy started again, um, new warehouses were built and they were built taller so that you can put eight, nine, ten cars on top of each other and not directly on top but in a rack so that you can take out every cask itself. In the Dunwich warehouses, you have to remove all the casks from the top when you would like to have uh, one cask from the bottom. So typically warehouses were filled and then they were removed completely. So warehouses were seen as a, yeah, as a lump sum of casks, which you have to take out altogether. Uh, in those wrecked warehouses, you have a random access to every cask that you can take out with a, with a forklift, with a special uh, clamp in the front, and you can take out every cask itself. The floor is, of course, concrete. That is, uh, the forklift is able to, to drive uh, safely. Um, and on, below the roof of this high warehouse, the air is becoming hotter and this hot air is relatively dry and it sucks out more liquid from the casks. So on top, on the upper floors, 
or the upper positions in these warehouses, uh, the angel share is extremely high. So I've seen warehouses where they cover the top casks with plastic foils. <laughs> yeah, you can save money with this. Um, those high warehouses I've seen at Springbank, Glen Glasso, Macallan. Macallan, it's even uh, air conditioned. Well, in 1995, uh, they changed over and tried to place the casks not on its side, but on an end, like this cask. And the bunghole, they did not place at the side, but on the top. And you can fill and empty those casks with a robotter, robotic equipment. Uh, you, you suck it out and you fill it in. So all the cask standing, uh, automatic uh, extraction of the bung, uh, no turning over. Uh, so it's quite easy. I've seen that at the Jameson, at New Middleton in the south of Ireland. Um, and uh, you place these casks not on the, on the real floor, but on pallets. You have four casks on a pallet and then you can have a forklift and not only moving one cask with this clamp in front, but move four casks in one effort. You save money with this. And you're able to place pallets on top of each of the casks several stories high uh, so that you are able to mature more whiskey in a given area of square meters or square feet. It's cheaper to mature. Um, there had been damages to the staves where the bung hole was in. I've seen that at McKellen. They removed a sherry cask uh, and it fell a little to the floor, not much, 20 centimeters this amount and then it makes crack crack the bung fell off and 200 liters of whiskey ran on the floor until they were able uh, to fix the hole so if the bung is an, at an end you can't have that <laughs> if you throw the pallet over okay <laughs> um, at the Aaron distillery uh, you can see, I will have a video of the Aaron distillery translated very soon. Um, you can see the different warehouses, the old uh, Dunwich warehouses, the wrecked warehouses and the new one uh, where you have the cask standing upside uh, on top of each other. Um, today, in contrast to decades or 100 years ago, a century ago, uh, you keep track of your casks, you have a cask management, so that you do not use a cask eight or nine times and the result is very bad. Uh, no, every cask has its history inside a computer and there is no uh, uh, painting on the end of the cask with the name of the distillery. No, <laughs> there's a barcode tacked uh, to the front of the cask. Uh, and this barcode contains everything, the cask and the cask number, and, or it contains the cask number and with this cask number you can look into a database, see uh, when the cask was produced, what was in the cask before, how long was it used, and, and, and. Uh, so you can, uh, yeah, you know what the result in this cask will be, plus and minus. Uh, Every cask has its curriculum vitae. Um, at Macallan, every cask is uh, tasted several times, or the content of the cask is tasted several times over the lifetime of the cask, uh, according to 11 criteria. And so you're able, with a computer, to select 50 casks for a batch of Macallan so that the result will be close to that what you would like to have. Perhaps you have to change a cask for a more intense uh, if you mix up the final batch. 
Uh, so the results of your maturation are much more stable than they were before. Um, casks are also rejuvenated now since I, th I, th I think about 10 to 15 years. Uh, there you clean the cask from the inside that the uh, the charcoal inside the cask. The cask is at first toasted so that on the inside of the staves uh, the cellulose is converted into wood sugar and this wood sugar is caramelized and this caramelized wood sugar brings uh, the brown color to the whiskey. Then uh, the inside is burned with a high flame so that charcoal uh, is produced, a thin layer of charcoal on the inside and after say 20-30 years of the usage of a cask the charcoal is filled with sharp substances, sharp aromas you do not like to have and the walls, the staves of the cask are extracted from the wood sugars or the caramel of the wood sugars and the other flavors and the cask is dead. Then uh, you clean the cask from the inside with a steel brush that the charcoal goes off and the, uh, the toasted and weak inside of the cask is torn off also and then you toast it again, burn it again and you have a rejuvenated cask so that the uh, that new aromas are available for the next whiskey. This is a real, real advantage in our days that you do not have to use those old cas casks over and over again. Balvini, they had a maturation in used casks for a certain time, 10 years perhaps, and then they fill it into a different cask, like sherry cask, to bring the taste up to the level they would like to have. So they have to use new casks for additional flavors, and uh, these old casks you could rejuvenate uh, so that the result of the maturation uh, yeah, is good in the first time. Um, there is a... I have to, to say some critics also. Uh, in former times there was one cask out of ten which was extraordinarily good. Did I say one out of ten? No, one out of a hundred which was extraordinarily good and uh, from time to time you were able to have one. Have you already consumed a hundred bottles? No? So, uh, so the amount of very very good casks was very small and uh, you always read on the bottles Ah, this cask was especially selected for and uh, we looked through the warehouses and find no today nobody is allowed to go through the warehouses and select there is a given process for the selection of casks and uh, the chance that you get an extraordinary cask for for a low price is very very small. Today the distillers know they're good casks and they sell it for a high price. That's it. In former times you had the chance to get one out of a hundred an extraordinary good cask. The good message is that the average quality of the cask went up a factor of two or five over the last hundred years. The Maltings are very constant. There is a, a high malting quality. There is no mold in the in the barley. Uh, very good. Uh, the mashing process, the temperatures are controlled in very uh, little variances. Uh, the uh, the fermenter, the washbacks. They are always clean. There are no vinegar bacteria in it. Uh, the casks, uh, the production process in the pot stills are uh, controlled very tight. So there's no overboiling. There's no soap <laughs> added uh, 
to the wash. And uh, the maturation, the casks are controlled with the cask management is called also very close. So uh, the quality went up very much, but critics is you do not have the chance to get an extraordinary good cask by chance. No, you have to pay for the extraordinary cask. That's it. But you're able to pay the money for a very good cask. The chance is there. Whew. This is the end from my production of single malt whiskey once and today. And uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and stay tuned. There's more to come.